Yeah, I just want to say, uh, you know, been good working with everybody this year. Hopefully you could see you guys in person here, you know, one of these days. But, uh, you know, I appreciate your professionalism. And, uh, you know, as a team, as an offense, we're just really, uh, you know, single single focused right now. We want, to, we want to play our best football in this last game. You know, we, we as coaches owe it to these players to give them, them our best effort. And, and, you know, we're all pros. So we all want to finish strong, and that's our whole focus for the week. Well, Courtney, and then Chris and Andrew. Hey, Clint. Just wanted to ask you about Sean in Green Bay, and you know, just I know that he didn't practice last week, and Zim said that he knew the game plan cold. But how how challenging was that for somebody to step in in a must win situation when you know the circumstances really seemed stacked against him in that game? Yeah, you know, he had, he. Uh, you know, I was proud of what Sean did. You know, what we asked him to do, you know, I thought he had a hot start. You know, unfortunately, that first, uh, you know, third down of the game, we get called back and then get him into a third and long. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought, I thought Sean, Sean did everything that we asked him to do. You know, he uh, threw his first touchdown pass, so I was proud of him for that. But uh, without, without having practiced, you know, leading up to it very much, I thought, I thought he gave us, you know, everything that he had. And I'm proud to be associated with a guy like that. Um, hey, Clint, uh, Dalvin Cook was pretty open with us yesterday, kind of, uh, you know, talking about it was a rocky season and that sort of thing, and he's committed to coming back bigger, stronger, and faster during the offseason. How did you feel about Dalvin Cook's season? And while he's obviously a Pro Bowl guy, uh, how do you feel about what he'll want to maybe do to get even better for next year? Yeah, well, I think that's just what he's made of. He's always trying to get better. You know, I would expect nothing less from him. Um, you know, there was a lot of plenty of things out of his control, whether it be injuries or uh, you know COVID that kept him out of games. But when he was with us, obviously he was he was a he was one of our best players. And um, you know, I think there's a time to look ahead to next year and a time to talk about that and think about that. But you know, I know as far as he goes and I go, we're all trying to focus on on the Bears and just play our best football in this game. Oh, Clint, I'm sorry, but I got to ask you about just looking back if I can, because I don't know if we're going to get to talk to you because coordinators typically don't after the final game. Yep. Um, but what have you thought of this year? Because it just seems that the offense has been kind of up and down in, in games, had a lot of high moments, a lot of low moments. Um, what have you thought is, of just your first year as a coordinator and kind of how it's progressed in this game? Yeah, I agree. I, I agree that uh, consistency would be something we want to improve on. Um, some some really good games and some games uh, that we want back, and that's part of play, part of pro football. But it's it's something that you know I think we could have, we could have done a lot better job of this year is just being more consistent, sustaining drives, uh, being a better third down team, and uh, that's that's the most important stat that sticks out. You know, being being better on third down. So. Again, there's going to be going to be time to look at all that all those things, but you know we can be a really good third down team here on Sunday against Chicago and be good on first down, second down, and um, just uh, just have our guys play their best football this week. Back to Courtney and then Chris. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to follow suit, Glenn. I mean, just when you look back at the situation that you were put in this first year, um, it's your first year as the play caller. Was it? Was it challenging not having, you know, having to kind of do this with without? I know Rick Dennison was supposed to be here this year. Like, how challenging was it not having a veteran voice like that, you know, to be able to, you know, kind of help maybe the offense through some of the ups and downs that you guys went through, and somebody for you to lean on too. Yeah, you know, that's one way to look at it. But I, I would say I was put in an unbelievable situation. You know, just with the talented players that we have. Um, Great quarterback play, you know, great skill positions, you know, offensive line played really well this year and uh, still was able to lean on Rick Dennison all year. Used him a lot. Still was able to lean on, you know, Kennedy and, and uh, Keenan, those veteran coaches, Coach Zemmer every day. So I would say that I was put in, a, in really an unbelievable situation. I was really blessed to be a part of that. Yeah, hey, Clint, just wanted to ask you about a couple of rookies that you guys took in the third round. I mean, how did you feel about uh, Kellen Mond's rookie season? I mean, some people are thinking 
maybe he hasn't developed quite as well as had been expected, but I'll let you comment on how you think Kellen is doing. Yeah, well, I think it's always it's it'd be unfair because it hasn't played hasn't played this year. But I'll say the things that he could control, and that was you know being in the meeting room, being the first guy in, being the last guy out, studying, um, asking great questions, trying to stay after practice every day, getting there early before practice. As far as all those things, he, he was aces. He did a great job of, uh, of trying to get the most out of his talent. And so it's yet to be seen what he's going to become. But uh, I know if it's, if it's going to be up to his work ethic to see if he's going to be a player, then that's going to be no question because he's a worker. He loves the game, cares about the game and his teammates. And I think uh, once he gets his opportunity to go play, um, I think he's going to do a good job. So he's just got to go get an opportunity. And let me ask you, I said two, but maybe I'll make it three. Let me ask you about some offensive linemen. First of all, how'd you feel about Christian Jarrasaw's rookie season? Obviously, he was hurt at the start, but it seemed like he's he's come on and been a solid guy for you guys. Yeah, I agree. There was a time, you know, we didn't know if he was going to play it all this year. And, you know, he went through his rehab and came on and really helped us this year, helped us in our, in our drop back pass game and helped us in our run game with his athleticism. And, He's going to keep getting better. So I was, I was really pleased with his rookie season. I think, I think he's got a, a lot of potential uh, to be a heck of a player, and he's willing to put in the work. So I like his mindset. Uh, I like what he's all about, and uh, I really respect uh, his work ethic. And then as a final, Wyatt Davis, I mean, he talked at the start of the season about when, after he was drafted, wanting to be a starter and that sort of thing, and he hasn't played a snap from scrimmage. Why do you think it never got to uh, – the situation where he was a really a serious contender to start this year. Yeah, I think uh, there's some guys in front of him that were playing well, you know, and uh, his his story is yet to be told. But you know, he's he's been putting in the same practice practice work behind the scenes, and uh, it's just it's up to him. It's up to Wyatt to uh, to go, uh, you know, put a great off season together, you know, do have a great OTA, have a great training camp, and just slowly become become the player that. He wants to be that we all want him to be, but uh, you know, it's again, it's just opportunity. He didn't didn't get it. Kellen didn't get it. They're working behind the scenes, and what they become um, will be a result of their of the work they've put in. So, just going to keep coaching the heck out of him, and uh, you know, making him better. So when he gets his opportunity, then he can show us what it's all about. Andrew. Hey, Clint, I just wanted to ask about just the communication with Mike Zimmer. You brought him up and just the influence he's had. Um, what's that like game days now, and how's that progressed? Because uh, I think you had mentioned, obviously, sometimes about you guys talking through situations to run or pass, and, and sometimes the communication didn't seem like it was clear, at least from what he was saying. So from your end, I guess, what, how has that kind of developed for you guys? And was that a problem at all, potentially, on, on Sunday? And yeah. um, you know, overall, it's it's been really great. I've coached. What I love about coach is that he's always going to tell you exactly what he what he wants, and uh, he's not going to sugarcoat it. And I really appreciate that. Um, and that's whether it's game management or that's you know how he wants practice run. Um, he's uh, definitive, and there's never been any gray area there. You know, um, as far as game day goes, you know, um, game day has been really good too. I think there's maybe a, maybe one game where I, um, I had my hand on the button and couldn't hear what he was saying, but. Other than that, you know, it's been really clear. It's been uh, it's been really positive communication between he and I. Uh, he always lets you, lets me know, you know, where I stand and and directs us. John. So Clint, uh, I apologize if someone has already asked this earlier, but um, now that you have one game left, when you look back on your first full year at the Reigns. You know, your dad can tell you so much, you can observe so much, but in it learning, what is maybe the number one lesson that you're like, oh, that's what everyone has told me about, but now I understand it from a different perspective. I'm living through it. I really wish I could give you one thing. I, I wish I wish I could do that, but but I can't. It's it's been a, it's been plenty of things. Um, the main the thing that just sticks out in my mind every day is that it's it's. It's never a one-man operation. It's a it's a team thing. It's a it's the whole offensive staff working together. And I I don't know how anyone would do it without it without a great staff like us. You know, I'm really just really blessed to work with veteran guys that where we care about each other and we work hard for each other. And on game day and throughout the week, there's a lot of communication. And uh, I've leaned on their experience all year. And there's been so much 
positive things that have happened in games that um, that people have given me credit for that don't belong to me. They belong to our to Kennedy Palmao and, and Phil Rauscher and Keenan and Andrew and uh, Coach Zimmer. And uh, you know, there's been pretty negative, plenty of negative things that that do belong to me. So I, I just I think it's all about having a cohesive unit, cohesive staff. And I think when you have that, you can have a lot of success.